Well, those of you with good memories will remember Jan Tour and his punching power and what he's capable of doing and how much havoc he can wreak. Remember the huge left hand against Rubio and then Jose Luis Rodriguez as seen uh, on Eurosport. But this might be a new, uh, new guy for you in uh, Pierrot. You say he's been relatively busy over the last couple of years. He's got a bit of time to make up. Relatively inexperienced for a 28-year-old. So he's got to get a move on. Well, they're moving in quickly, taking on Jan Tua now, the 14th pro fight. They believe in this guy. Um, he's already ranked number three by the WBO, but that's probably, well, is a little bit generous. But he's, if he does a job on Jan Tua, then he's a serious... Um, man to keep an eye on. He's a decent boxer, knows what he's doing. I wondered whether he'd come out and try and stamp his authority and John to right from the first bell. He's not. He's having a look. Had a few problems in the first round against uh, Tolkien Bayev. He was in real trouble in the first round. He was on the ropes and he was, uh, he was struggling. It took him a couple of rounds to settle down in there. Now that was last December, his last fight. Maybe you know, just a, anything can happen with that. But if you if you, you don't want a habit of starting slowly, this is what he can do. Little clusters like that, accurate, placing them well. Jantua just thinking, just that he won't know a huge amount about Pirog, I guess. Though he's been in Germany, I don't think he's sparred with him. They say he's not. Yeah, it was a superior strength movement and the sheer volume of punches that in eventually wore down Toygombaev. And you'll see it as the fight goes on. Yeah, and Pirog's the natural middleweight here, although Jan Tua's just about as tall as him, not much between them. He, 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 his best days were welterweight and light middleweight. Now, he's still capable, but he, he's, he, he's going up in weights as he goes out, gets older, 35 years of age. Variation of punches as well from, from Pirog to all destinations, isn't there? There's nothing quite really predictable about him. No, that's a good stiff jab he just landed as well. He's sharp. A couple of decent hooks to follow that up as well from, from Pirog. Yeah, crowd liked it as well. You can see why. Left hook to the head. That troubled Jantua. Yeah, Jantua's felt that. Following it up again. Comes back with a left hand of his own. Just to remind him that he's still in there. Yeah, he needs a punch to get himself into this fight. Because he can't stay on those ropes and just take punches. He was hurt by a left hook. Well, we wondered about with the big question, the big question, and only four fights since that uh, loss to Arta Abraham. He hasn't really been active. Looks in decent physical shape, but you really can't draw an awful lot from that. No, he's, he's, um, he's not been boxing at any kind of level, and he's not doing He's getting in trouble here on the ropes, Jantua, having to soak it up, no option. His legs did a little dip when Pirog landed that cracking left hook. Who were... Uh, I think for uh, Froch, didn't he? That was his last fight, Tati Vossian, yeah, and he, he, earlier he went 12 rounds with Howard Eastman. That was an ambitious fight for what was Pirog's fourth pro outing, and he won the Russian middleweight title over 10 rounds. His other one we saw, 10-round decision over Gayard Ayatovich, who came in fairly short notice and could survive pretty well against him because he looked after himself. Pirog won just about every round. So he's not had anybody telling him Hey, you're not that good yet. That was a low left hook. Brief flurry from Janta at the start of this second round, but again, as soon as he opens that defense up, these volleys of punches are flying in at all from all directions. Well, Jantua's feet are much slower than they used to be. He's not getting in range. Again, great body movement from, from Pirog, dancing all over the place, making himself such a difficult target for uh, a Jan Tua to hit. And again, probing a little bit, but Jan Tua finally feeling as if he, he better do something here, just to a brief, brief bit of respite. Well, he can punch Jan Tua, and if he does get close, then he, he will test Pirog's chin, but at the moment he's not... He's not really getting the punch, he's off, he's getting beaten to the punch. There again, Pirog landed a right hand, step back, the counter missed by a, a distance. Crowd getting behind the Russian now as well. Jantua's not being able to match his work rate either, so problems. He needs a punch from somewhere, Jantua. 
just the, the sheer number of punches during that sequence then five six seven that all landed into a degree of cleanliness and power on the end of them yeah, left hook a minute ago from Jan Tua, but no real weight behind it. Cuffing sort of shot. Surviving at the moment is Jan Tua. A little else as the hooks come in once again. I like the way he thinks about his work, Pirog. He's not. He's not worried, he knows he has to take the odd one because he's going to stand in range some of the time, a lot of the time, because he wants to get his punches off, but he's quite quick, quite accurate. But again, ducks easily out the way of the rather slow and rather predictable shots coming back at him. But so far, not the same kind of effect on Jan Tua that the punches had in the first round. So, clear round for Pirot, but a slight improvement for Jan Tua. Well, Jan Tua's up and out there early enough. Can he try and get some success of his own? Can he test Pirog at some point during this fight? Just as we can begin to find out whether or not Pirog is able to take a punch. We know we can dish them out. We know what his attributes are. We don't know what his weaknesses are. Just that was a good right hand that from Pirog. Follows it up with again another selection of hooks. And again this volley of punches has Jan Tua moving back onto the ropes. He's got to get off, which he does. Yeah, Jan Tua started quite positively, wanting to come forward behind the jab, trying to get some more snap in his work. Pirog got him straight back under control. Good sharp punching. He's thoughtful, not rushing anything. Pirog will be well aware that this might well oh, go the distance, but at the moment he's picking Jan Tua apart. Left hook from Jan Tua landed a bit high, but at least got through. Maybe he's one of these super intelligent guys that's using these people really as practices. He can just sharpen up his full range of skill en route to one of the, the big titles, the big championships. Well, I think this is what he is. I think he boxes this way. He's thoughtful. He, he, he's good at mixing things up. He's accurate. He looks for openings and he works for them. And to a trying to catch him with a left hook counter, he's almost done it a couple of times. He's not afraid to, to go in at close quarters, is he? And mix it up in there, Pierrot. No, because he's got the speed and, and Jantua's not reacting fast enough to make that a difficult, dangerous thing to do. All things are relative, obviously, but he keeps taking the odd left hook back, but he's just bamboozling Jantua with the pace. Well, no doubt he'll be watching tomorrow night, Arta Abraham, who is uh, fighting, I think he's in Berlin, isn't he? Yep. He's in Berlin, that would make for, for an interesting night. Again, another hook goes underneath that guard and rattles the chin of Jan Tua. He's uh, soaking up an awful lot of punishment, but as I said, we know that he is capable of taking plenty of punishment. Well, a lot of Pirox punches are, are arm punches, no real weight behind them, but then he suddenly steps in and, and drops a harder one in. That's, it's pretty clever what he's doing. He's, he's not wasting energy. Now the left hook again, and Jantour acknowledged that little nod of the head. Telltale reaction from him. tries to come back assert a little bit of authority as he leans in to try and get some leverage left hand from uh, Jan Tua uh, brushed off by Pirot and tries to conclude the round with a hook misses wildly and another round in the bag for Pirot. Well um, I thought he looked okay at the weigh in when he, he fought Raul Marquez last year in the fight that was called off I thought he looked absolutely dreadful at the weigh in the fight was called off the next morning uh, Ever going to get it on with Pavlik? Okay. Well you'd love to see that wouldn't you but he's got to get through Mahir or Al so uh, uh, tomorrow he should do that on paper but if you're struggling for the weight anything can happen 
Back here, round four. Pirog in total control here. And uh, Jantu is just existing in the ring and doing very little else at the moment. Yeah, he needs something to encourage him, doesn't he? He needs to get in there and land a good, solid punch and, and get Pirog's attention. He'll be encouraged, though, won't you, due to the fact that he's taken so many punches and there's been maybe the odd one or two uh, that have just uh, hurt him a little, but nothing much. Maybe this is the moment. Again, he's wildly swinging. His timing is miles off. Jan too. takes another couple of hooks and then shots to the body and then a great right hand and followed up with another left hook. They're coming so fast you can't keep up with them. Yeah, he's taking them and he's watching them coming. He's not really getting surprised by them, but he's just got no answer, no defense to them. He's always been a little bit loose defensively, Jan Tua, but his pace and his power made up for that at all but the very highest level. He's good to watch, isn't he, uh, Pirog? Yeah, he is. Keeps you interested and he mixes things up quite nicely. Nothing predictable about the performance from the Russian tonight. And yeah, switches so to try and work to the body. Jan Tua. Can't get his jab. Well, he's, it's almost like he, well, he doesn't want a jab, does he? Because he knows what's going to come back the other way at him. Probably about five or six punches before he can get his uh, arms back in to position to guard his chin. Yeah, it looks as if Janto is losing a bit of belief in himself. He, he, yeah, he's, he's proud. He's going to stick this through as long as he can. He's not getting unduly hurt um, because Pirog isn't putting everything into the shots. Is going to worry Pirog at the moment that he that he's not? Uh, if he doesn't put him away, would it worry him? No, I don't think so. I think he's he's um, just that sort of patient guy who's taking his time, pleased that things are going well. Looks very, very confident, doesn't he? Yeah, his body language is, is that of a man who just really believes in himself and believes he belongs in there. He's not rushing anything at all. I don't think he's, he's particularly going for the stoppage at the moment. Janta to, to able to do nothing to try and shake him out of his groove. Fairly static target these days. Janta not doesn't move as as well as he used to, but then you wouldn't wouldn't expect him to. And uh, 35 years of age. No, he's just got no answer to the jab either. He, he's standing right in front of Pirog and. His, his movement's not good enough and his, his guard's too wide and Pirog just slotting the jabs through. Well, Jantu is waiting for Pirog to tire. The news is he doesn't. Round five then. Yep, in case anyone didn't catch that, that was 40-36. All four rounds to Pirog and all, all three cards. The WBC still experimenting with open scoring, but I guess it's, what do you it's think? getting more established now, isn't it? The experiment's going on a very long time. Um, I mean, two minds. I used to for the punter, say, if you, if the, for the punter, if you're out there, at least you've got a, at least you've got a view, haven't you, of, yeah. of what's going on, and there's, there's unlikely to be those controversies at the end or the, the boos and, and everything else, for what you perceive as being a, a wrong, a wrong no, call on it, a fight. It, it, it can affect the way a boxer reacts, but um, you know, then, then what other sport does a man not know how he stands in, in mid competition? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a difficult one. I can see both sides, frankly. I, I'm, it doesn't seem to bother me. I thought it would, but it doesn't bother me that people are telling me that Pirogs win every round. I know that. So it, it, at the moment, it's not in this fight anyway. It, I don't think it's a big deal. So back to work goes uh, Pirog in this fifth round. Jan Turret trying to make it a little bit more difficult for him. He's offering, he was offering certainly in that opening minute a little bit more to make this a contest. I just think his feet are too slow to get him into position now, Jan Tour. He needs to suddenly find himself in punching room, punching distance and, and just let a big one go. I don't think he, he's gonna work his openings because he, he can't his feet aren't moving quick enough. Well when we ask the question about desire, I suppose four fights in three years partially answers the question anyway really doesn't it yeah it does and he's been sparring in the lead up to this with Mahir Oral you know helping him out um, acting as a sparring partner and he's boxing a bit like one at the moment Jan Tua 
he just looks like an old pro, doesn't he? He's been there, done it, knows his way around the ring, and he's, he's just trying to give Pirog a workout. If something happens in the fight, if he senses that he's tiring or something like that, then he may be able to come on. Did that right hand bother him? I think it did. Yeah, it did. And another right hand that followed it did exactly the same. He covers up once more to deny that hook. And left hook again, a root to his chin. It didn't wobble him or anything, but he just felt it. There was a reaction. Right. Well, this is a 12-round fight, remember? Yeah, and Pirog's not done 12 rounds yet, so he'd be pleased to do that, I guess, but he's won five out of five. And here we go again. Yeah, first time I saw him was when he, he, he beat Gilbert Eastman way back 1999 at the Elephant Castle, and he stopped Gilbert um, for a, a Commonwealth title at welterweight. And then um, saw him in a fight after that again when he, he shocked Daniel Santos, the Puerto Rican, who became a double world champion in five rounds at an All-American Sports Park, un an unusual venue in Las Vegas, but open air beat that other great British boxing institution, didn't he? O.J. Abrams. <laughs> that was the last time we saw him here, I think. That was at Doncaster Dome on an undercard somewhere. Well, some while ago. But, um, yeah, he was young then. And now he's the old pro who's soaking it all up, sucking it up. Trying to make something happen when he can. Got a jab in, at least. That's a night's nice pay in, in this for him as well, which... It's certainly going to be useful for a man who's been, as we said, pretty inactive. Yeah, that's right. Last fight went home to Ghana. To probably that was little more than an exhibition for him. A homecoming, a party, if you like. But uh, Pirov not really building on his first four rounds yet for me. He's just doing the same things. I'd like to see him try and get a stoppage, try and work out just a way of, of driving Jantua back and unloading some heavy shots, three, four, five in a row. At the moment, he's still doing the same type of thing, which is effective enough in point scoring and keeping Jantua under control. This was the step up in class. This was the type of opponent that he'd never been in with before that was going to test him, make things or make life a little bit more difficult than he'd uh, had before. Yes, and in that context, this is a very good performance, isn't it, from Pirok? Because Jantu has never been in the fight, really. It's been a move behind all night long. Now, this is the question you uh, you found yourself asking, watching him in that fight against uh, Toygon Bayev. It was after, he did stop him in the fifth, but after four rounds, it was getting very similar. He was following the same pattern as this. He eventually wore him down. Well, you asked him to produce then a series of flurry of punches which found their home and he did but it looks as if he's tiring a little bit doesn't it pirog he'll be or is thinking, he just taking a, re a breather he'll be thinking well there's 12 rounds here this guy's not just crumbling i'm not breaking him up um that is its own problem will he get frustrated will he lose a bit of concentration i don't know we'll see but uh, he, he's he's picking his punches still with good accuracy good variety Yeah, and it's Jan Tour at the end of the round that's just upping his work rate, getting a little bit of success. He didn't do enough to win the round. But his contribution is gaining. Still got the same problem with the sound there, then. Here we go then. Round seven. Previous six been won by Pirog in the white trunks. Kofi Jan Tour. 35-year-old Ghanaian, who's been in with some of the big names of the last decade. He is a survivor, and he's fighting as such. But maybe he's just beginning to uh, cut loose a little bit, not too much. No real sense of adventure prevalent just at the moment. But there's a bit more movement from him, and there's a few more punches being thrown. And he only needs to land one. We know what wreckage he can cause when he throws a big left hand and one of them lands. We've seen it a few times in his career before. Yep, that's just what he needs now. But he's, he's got to 
want to do it. He's got to get in position and throw it. At the moment, he's, he's just getting beaten to the punch. He's never quite unbalanced, never quite in range. And he's, the lack of speed is, is what's just letting him down here. And he can't really find that at, at 35. He's just got to hope he, he lures Pirog into some kind of mistake or the Russian tires. Yeah, as you said, he's never been the Russian in a 12 round fight before. And we talked about how uh, much stamina he had. This short right hand then that inadvertently found a target then from Jan Tu and it was just the movement of Pirog's head into the punch's path. But look at the response from him, you know, those are stiff jabs, that woke him up almost. He said, okay, I'm gonna... now he's complaining to the referee, that's amateur night, complaining to the referee and took a left hook. He's in there to do the fighting, leave the referee to sort the infringements out. He felt a punch from Jan Tu straight around the back. Well, there'll be a few of those when he gets up to the top level. This is it. Remember, he's 28 years of age. He said they're moving him on quickly, and that is the reason why. Yeah, 29 tomorrow. They don't have a lot of time. Turn pro at 25, so, you know, they, they, they've done reasonably well with him. They've never matched him too softly. That's a good left hook, that again, from Pirog. Wild lunge following it up from Jan to it. But you usually find a time in the fight where at least well, one punch goes the way of the uh, stronger puncher in this case, which we know is uh, Jan to it. Well, it was as a, as a light middleweight. It, it, he can punch, but look there, his feet are nowhere near in range, and he just lunged and swung with the left hand. Time that took to arrive at his destination as well. I'm surprised there wasn't anything coming back over the top of it. And uh, get a strong conclusion. And another round in the bag for Pirog. There we go then with the eighth round. And there's no doubt that the Jan Tour of five or six years ago would have given him much, much more of a test because he was so much quicker. He'd have gone in and had a rumble with him and said, OK, you're clever, you can box well, you're accurate, but you know, have a war, let's see how good you really are. Well, at the moment, Jan Tour, um, because of his age, is having to rely on a, a bit of cunning. He's just having to wait for openings, but he's having to wait far too long. I mean, the, the, there is a bit of the, the the Hopkins effect, isn't there, about the way people think now. They think because he can do it up to 42 and he's this fine uh, physical specimen that everybody is able to perform better as they get older. Well, Jan Tua is not performing better, but he's still capable and he happens to be in with a, a pretty good opponent. And, and uh, you know, at ordinary level, Jan Tua can earn his living around the circuit, I'm sure, for quite a while yet. I don't think he's he's going to be world class again, but he's got caught with his defence down there. Yeah, he was hurt by that left hook. Went back to the ropes. Yeah, that's the survival quick. instinct kicking in there, isn't it, from Jan Tua? Well, what he does is watch. He doesn't lose concentration, even when he's stunned by a punch, as he was then. He just watches what happens. He doesn't lose his cool, and therefore he recovers because he's he's you know, he's not caught by surprise by too much. And trying to take him on a trip, isn't he? Pirog round the ring, constantly on the move, changing angles. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. Just mix it up. If he's not going to just try and drive him back with one huge attack that, you know, some 30-second burst to try and stop him against the ropes, then he's got to just mix it up, move around. That was a half-decent uh, left hand from uh, Jan Tua. Well, Pirog looking a little bit tired, standing in front of him a little bit too much but maybe he thinks this this old guy can't hurt me you know <laughs> good right hand on the chin again from him but Jantua took it still fairly unfazed by the punches of Dmitry Pirog then again swinging wildly getting nowhere near his target yeah, the right hand was just a fraction short, wasn't it? The, 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 he just he saw the opening, he threw the jab, fell short with that. The right hand 
four or five years ago that would have landed, not this time. Been nine and ten rounds a couple of times, Pirok, over the years. Well, a little nod of respect from him at the end of that round. I think he needs to up his pace now. Round nine then of 12. And Pirog has won every single round so far. Really, the questions now are, is Pirog going to get tired and walk into something? Unlikely, I would think, because he's dictated the pace so far. He's controlled pretty much what he wants to do. Um, or is he going to go for a stoppage? Is he going to start to put more meat in his punches? Or is he just happy just to just keep drilling them through like this? Or is, is there any more meat to come in these punches? I mean, we're in round nine now. Do you think we, we had this... Uh question raised earlier on whether or not he has the punch to take out an opponent like this we've seen him take out lesser opponents the first time he's in with a, a, what has been a serious player hasn't really shaken him just yet no that's right he did in the first round and then, then Jantua got adjusted to that he got adjusted to the the, the power and the accuracy really and you, you know, he's been stung once or twice but you're right he's never looked like going down or being badly shaken up even that uppercut, he didn't see that one. That was a rare one. He was caught napping, but just took it. And yeah, there's a question mark over Pirog's power at the top level. Of course there is, but we'll see in other fights, assuming he wins this, which is at the moment looking a pretty safe bet. And just trying to open up that defense, get a right and left hook in. This gets massive amount of scoring punches as he tries to hook once more underneath that guard of Jantua. Well, that's the impressive thing, isn't it? He's accurate and he knows how to keep this man under control. He's stopping him getting un into the fight. So if he isn't one of these concussive one-punch knockout artists, he's going to be somebody that nobody at the top is going to want to get in the ring with. Well, he's, he, he believes in himself so much and... If, You've just got to draw him into a war and take him on, and, and you've got a, a certain person who can do that. Um, you've got to take him out of his comfort zone, make him do what he doesn't want to do, make him fight rather than box, and he seems quite happy controlling this kind of pace. Controlling the pace, controlling the fight and its outcome. He's enjoying himself. You, you, to beat him, you've got to stop him enjoying it. You've got to make him think. You've got to rough him up. Do do things he doesn't want you to do. At the moment, Jantua just following him around, really. Playing into his hands. Moments have been very brief for Jantua. You do get the impression you think that he thought, perhaps if I just take, you know, just to take some of this punishment as we move into the later rounds, uh, maybe... I'm going to get some success, but like we said, stamina is one of his key strengths. Takes a few at the end then as he tries to lock him in at close quarters, but again, it's another round in the bag for Pirog. No, he's not really putting much leverage in. He's not planting his feet, digging himself into the canvas and whacking away. Is it, he's just placing them. Is it possible? His, I mean, his body can presumably become accustomed to actually receiving the amount of punishment that he's been taking for the last eight rounds. There's no surprises now for Jantua here at the moment, is there? I think that's right. I think that's exactly what's happened. Jantua's become accustomed to it. He's um, saying, well, I'm not getting hurt. I'm not bothered. OK, I'm taking a few more than I would have hoped to do. But... Yeah, it, it, it's no problem going 12 rounds here. At the moment, he seems to have settled for that, which is, you know, sometimes that can be deceptive. Maybe he'll just suddenly burst into life. But he's, we're in round 10, and it hasn't happened so far. Yeah, and it's, a dis it's a, such a disappointment for a, for a fighter we know that has got in Jantua a big punch somewhere uh, to go 10 rounds so far, and we've not seen one of them get anywhere close to landing. Well, he's not getting in position to do it. And like that, when he thought about throwing it, Pirog had already landed his own and gone away again. It's yeah. age. It's all it is. Took a right to a left hand to the chin then that just uh, wobbled his foot, but more being off balance again rather than the power element from Pirog. Well, that's right. Pirog surprised him, just um, 
toided him into thinking the right hand was coming. Well, he, he held that back and, and uh, let go with the left hook. That was better. Somehow he's got a surprise, Janto. A little feints, little moves. It's all about lying and conning in there now, <laughs> just trying to make your opponent make a mistake. So they, they can read each other by now. Wiley old operator with Janto at Ben forced out of his shell and again shipped another load of punishment then he blocks he blocks several punches on his arms and gloves then and then comes back a couple of left hooks from Jan Tua it's a bit better no real belief in them though just little reminders to Pirog that's all say hey I'm going nowhere I'm here for the distance Again, that hook, the right hook coming underneath the guard once again as the, the movement is still as fresh as it was a couple of rounds ago. He's still moving nice and easily. Yeah, switch to southpaw, which he's done a few times more. and He's confident enough to stand in range and take the odd counter now, Pirog. Maybe he's getting a bit, a bit weary in the legs as well. Well, there's no doubt there will be a cause for, well, not an over celebration, but a, a muted celebration if he comes away with this with a, a unanimous decision, which he's going to get. Yeah, a little, little bit of bandage come loose on the tape, loose on the glove there. Annoying. Just a reminder, coming up, Dennis backed off against Stefan Kretschmann. That's the main event of the night. 12-round heavyweight contest, and Herbie Hyde's up next against Gabor Hallas in the cruiserweight division. Uh, we're thinking it should be an early night for the Hyde tonight, should dispatch his opponent, but then you never know as we come to the conclusion of round 10. And again, spontaneous applause for Pirog, who's got another round in the bag. And of course, Abraham clicked into gear. Which he does so often, you know, often he takes two or three rounds to get himself into a fight after, after Abraham. Jantua, yeah, he was livelier then as well. But Pirog overall, all right, we can be a bit critical and say, well, he's, he's not really built on anything. He's not developed his skills. He's not, he's doing the same thing now that he was doing in round two and three. But he's done a pretty comprehensive job so far. And uh, sometimes this is the the progress chart you're looking at and yeah, remember it's fight number 14 isn't it that's right and this is against a seasoned operator who's been there and done it and knows exactly what the business is about and Pirog has dominated him sharp right hand from him then Janter getting a little bit more adventurous in these final couple of rounds as he forces Pirog back onto the or toward the ropes but doesn't take too long before he's turned the other way. And Pirog is back in control. And again, another volley of punches. He works to the body and the head. Tries to split that guard open once more. And Jantua's pretty slow, so he's relying on single punches most of the time, which... You know, might only take one single punch, it might it? might, but he's, um, he's not able to get in range for more than one, so... Pirog does seem to have flagged a bit mentally here. He's taking breaks in rounds, and Jantu, he's, no, he's noticed that straight away. He's coming on a bit more. The mind of a, a seasoned pro who's been around for a good number of years thought that maybe a weakness was appearing in his opponent, and after losing all 11 rounds so far, smelt possibly a shock on the cards he comes back to another good right hand though from um, Pirog yeah landed a bit high and and he's, he's then you know the, the sharp little left hands chipping away again but Jantua is trying to put a show on here now he's he thinks this guy's beginning to tire it's very very late in the day but he's just trying to to give a little bit more of himself could be uh, uh, the final few minutes then for Pirog if he allows Jantura any success. Remember, he's into uncharted territory. He's never been at 12 rounds before. No, and that must be playing on his mind. I mean, you know, he's going to do it comfortably, barring the, the aforementioned big shot. But Jantura, I'm sure I saw him just smile a moment or two ago. He's thinking, yeah, this is comfortable now. Feeling good. 
And the thing is, he's gone through his life. He's only lost three fights in this long career of his. He doesn't want to add another defeat to it, you know, which is why when we ask that question, does he really want to win? I mean, he's not going to come in if he didn't have a, a serious thought that he could win this. Yeah, before the fight, he would have thought, I'm too experienced for this kid. I can do what I please. I can mess him about and win it. Well, he's just learned he's got a bit older than he thought he had, I think. Well, yeah, you're right, 16 years, three defeats, it's not bad, is it? And he clearly looks like he's a man who's in a bit of a hurry. He'd like to have got Jan Tua out of the way much earlier than this. But he'll settle for 12 good rounds as well. He'll know now that he can do 12 rounds. And in his mind, that's another barrier over. Another part of the learning job done for when he, if he gets to the top level. Obviously, there's a long way to go yet. He's EBU number four. Surprisingly, WBO number three, but I don't think anybody will be throwing him into a world title fight just in the next two or three fights. Yeah, at only four. More six, learning to do. I was going to say, just 65 rounds boxed before tonight, so you can add another 12 to that total now. And Jantura again, to a round 12, still just plodding on, really, without offering anything. We've waited all night to see whether or not he can actually unload one of his big shots. The answer's going to be no. I think Pirog's work's deteriorated in that he's throwing more and more arm punches, putting less and less power into them. And just as I speak, he drills a jab in, but, you know, the, he's just tired a bit, that's all. I think he accepted quite a while ago that this guy was tough enough to take the shots. He probably knew that on paper, but he wanted to find out for himself. You know, this, this man went 12 rounds with Artur Abraham, he's a tough old guy. You'll know that. But Jantua getting closer, scuffling away. Final minute and a half then. He's continuing. Well, it's a, a pretty exceptional work rate, really, from Pirog. He might have been switching to those arm punches, like you said, but he's still throwing them, isn't he? He's still moving. Yeah, that's right, and that's, that's kept Jantour under control most of the way. Last couple of rounds have been more difficult because he's tired, but Pirog, by and large, done a decent job as he goes into the final minute. Boxing on the back foot a bit more here and still picking Jantour off on the way, and there he is grinning again, Jantour. He knows he's nearly there, the money's nearly in the bank. Oh, oh, that was a good shot from Jantour. He <laughs> saved his best punch for the final minute, but just bounced off Pirog's jaw. Well, so there's the answer to one of the questions. If he gets hit with one, a good shot, uh, will he survive it? And that was the best shot that Jan Tua has thrown all night. And he brushed it off as if it didn't exist. That was another good left hand from Jan Tua. Two best punches of the night in the final minute. That had more of an effect. He, he, he felt that one. It registered. Uh, maybe this is what he should have done a, bit, a little bit earlier on, or maybe done it in bursts. Oh, that was on the back of the head then. Surprised the referee didn't stop that. You can see the crowd reaction behind. And this is what we wanted to see, and we'll need to see in the future. What happens when somebody backs Pirog up? What happens when they make him, you know, make him have a fight, have a war? There it is, end of the fight. Referee steps in. Pirog raises his hands to salute the applause. He's won. What will be a unanimous decision, Jan Tua never really in the fight. Couple of moments toward the end for this victory. Only his 14th fight. Late starter in the game, but he's a late starter, fast learner. Maybe. That's right. Uh, well, they've got to be very, very pleased. And, uh, you know, if they'd have said before the fight, would you take 11 rounds out of 12 against this guy? 12 rounds out of 12? Sure I would. I can't imagine what they're taking so long to add up, mind you, by the way. <laughs> oh, they always do, don't they? It's, it's just, you know, higher mathematics, it, 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 it just eludes people sometimes, 1 to 12. Now, a bit more to look forward to yet before we leave you here tonight. We've got Dennis Baktoff against Stefan Kretschmann in a heavyweight contest for the PABA Championship. And then, coming up next, though, we have uh, Gebel Hallas against Herbie Hyde. Here we go. Think he's not a dull watch, is he? I mean, that was 12 rounds, hard work, uh, but it wasn't dull to watch, was it? No, I think he's interesting. He's, he's one of those fighters. He's not explosive, but he's he's, he's watchable, and you're wondering how far he can go.
You'd have thought he might have got bored waiting for this result, but as he knows what the outcome oh, yeah. is really, and just gone. I don't understand what all this nonsense is about announcing the supervisor. I mean, come on, just give us the scores, for goodness sake. I'm sure that everybody cares who the supervisor is. No offence, Mr. Mauro Betty. People have gone to have a little walk. They know who's won this. Well, there's the bell. Oh, he gave him a round. VBC International Champion in Mittelgewicht is Dimitri Pirog. So there he is, Dimitri Pirog. Will collect the belt. Appreciation from his opponent tonight, Kofi Jantura. Yep, good performance. Well done, Pirov. We'll see him again, no doubt. And Jantura will get plenty more work off the back of that. Hopefully, he'll get something a little bit easier for him next time. Стоя в рубеже, Инок 
воин и шут След звезды Вылит по дорогам На душе покой Да тихая грусть И спокон веком Граничит с Богом Моя светлая рост